I was going out with this guy, and when he he asked me one time where you want to go, and I said, yeah, I want to go to this, you know, seafood restaurant, whatever, and because I knew that it was across the street from like the mall. <laughs> <laughs> Experience. Привет and welcome to another episode of the Vogue of Vogue with me, Connor Klein. This is the Zara Experience, and in today's episode, we're going to be looking at a video that has gone viral online. And in this video, even though it's not actually uh, filmed by a girl from Russia, she's actually living in the U.S. or somewhere else in Eastern Europe, can be Ukraine and Belarus, of course, for the purposes of this channel. But I think there are a lot of similarities that you're going to see between her behavior and many of the disingenuous girls here in Eastern Europe and many of the scammers. Like uh, a few weeks ago, it was about a month ago now, I started my uh, Scam Buster boot camp, actually just finishing it off this week. And a lot of the things that come up in this video are very pertinent to it. So definitely you want to uh, watch this one until the end and let me know what you think because often when I'm watching these videos online, they focus on well, a lot of videos that come into my news feed focus on um, content relevant to men in the West. And a lot of it is about gold diggers and women who are manipulative. And they always seem to think that green grass is greener on the other side, that the American women are the worst in the world. But let's see in this video because it's quite an interesting one. Now, the video is called How to Get a Guy to Spend Money on You. Now, I couldn't actually find the original video because apparently the YouTuber, she has taken it down. Uh, so I actually went to another channel which did a reaction to it and that is the Graham Stephan channel. Now, he is a, an entrepreneur and he makes a lot of these reaction videos in addition to providing like I think financial advice. I don't personally follow him but I do know who he is and he has become quite popular recently and I think actually some of his reactions to what she says are equally as interesting as what she's trying to pull and what she's trying to advocate in her um, in her video. So let's go and watch it. My name is Graham, welcome to my show, and we got a doozy of a video for you guys to watch today. You know, legitimately this morning, I, I woke up and I was a bit worried that I might not find a good video to react to today, and boy, was I wrong? And I saw this video and I, I knew this would have to be something that we all have to watch and see because it's just, it's absurd. This is the most absurd video I, I, I have ever clicked on in my entire life. Because like we have millennial money, that's great. We have extreme cheapskates, that, that, that's fun, that's fun. And then we got this, this is in a category of its own and this, and this exists on there. So anyway, this is uh, from a YouTuber called Love Your Natural. And the title is, how to get a guy to spend money on you. So the YouTuber, her name is Love Your Natural and she has quite a lot of subscribers. It's all close to 1 million. It's like 825,000 subscribers when she made this video. Now I can't see, of course, uh, the number of views that this video got because, well, she seems to have taken it down or at least put it on private for the moment. I guess she got a little bit of backlash uh, for making it. So let's dive into it at least. Um, parts of the video and um, this guy, uh, Graham Stefan, if I'm pronouncing his name, I think that's how he says it anyways. Uh, he's also a pretty big YouTuber, uh, 401,000 subscribers when I am filming this, which is actually, I'm actually filming this on the 1st of June 2020. So let's dive into it. It's going to be an interesting one for sure. Okay, best friends, let's jump right into this juicy girl talk video. How to get a guy to spend money on you, sis. Number one. First of all, it's extremely important. Do not skip number one or you are going to regret it so bad. Number one is test him. Why do you want to test him? Because you want to make sure that he's the spending money on you type. Some guys, you see them, you know, with their nice cars and they spend money on Rolexes and money on their outfits and stuff. And you know, they balling out of control. That doesn't mean that he's gonna spend money on you. Some guys, you know, like to spend money on themselves and themselves only. And if you bring it up to them, you know, about spending money on you, they're gonna flat out call you a gold digger. <laughs> So I find that hilarious that they would call her a gold digger since she's only interested in them for their money. So I'm not saying that Russian women or American men for the moment are more likely to do this and be interested in a guy just for money. But I have noticed this with uh, other YouTubers who are 
ostensibly gold diggers or even running a gold digger online school. They despise the word gold digger, but why not just own it? So one thing that really irks me when I see uh, YouTubers who promote a gold digger lifestyle for women is the fact that they despise the word gold digger. But if you're primarily interested in men just for money, I mean, that's fine. Just own it and say, I'm a gold digger and I'm proud. But they seem to just not want to say that they're a gold digger or resent being called a gold digger. Listen, if that's what you're primarily interested in, it's a free world. If you find a corresponding match for that who just wants to be milked for money, just own up to it and say, I'm a gold digger. But no, she's a part of that ilk. And I'm going to have a second reaction video to a very similar YouTuber who actually even has an online school for gold diggers. But she refuses to accept she's a gold digger. Anyways, let's go on and see. Oh well, it'll be interesting to see why, how Graham reacts to this one. I love that. They, if you want them to buy you stuff, they're gonna call you a gold digger. Hmm. Huh. Well, isn't, isn't that like the, the definition of what a gold digger would be? Wouldn't, wouldn't that be calling a spade a spade? From my perspective. I don't know, but but let's see what other mental gymnastics she has up her sleeve. So the first thing I want to do is like, you know, start a conversation like this. Like, oh my gosh, it's the first of the month already. Like, I feel like I hardly ever have money to myself. I'm always paying all these bills. Oh my God, so annoying. Oh, oh no. Oh, does that work? If he's the type to spend money on you, he's going to be like, brr, babe, that's crazy. Like, wait, how much do you pay? How much is your rent? Oh, it's 1500 all right, well, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a give you the 1500 when I see you later on today. Who does that? Who, who does that? I, I would be shocked. Well, apparently Graham doesn't know too many simps because they definitely do that kind of stuff. Now, this testing, guys, I have also seen it in a Ukraine. I'm actually filming this from Kiev. The weather hasn't been the best, so we're going to film this one indoors. And plus, obviously, with my laptop, it makes a bit more sense for this reaction video. But... I have seen that happen where girls were asking like strange questions like, oh, how much do you enjoy paying for things for girls? <laughs> Does that give you a lot of pleasure? So she seemed to have a script. I, this didn't happen very often, to be frank. But I remember this one time she was very direct and she must have had a memorized list of five questions. Can I get this guy to sponsor me before I invest any more time in him? So, I mean, if you're obviously for a girl and you're, you're a gold digger and you're just looking for a guy with money, you don't really care about much else, this is your only priority, then you probably would be better off to test the guys first so that you find those guys quicker and don't waste your, let's be honest, not really that precious time um, by speaking the guys are not going to sponsor you and just like simp to you all the, uh, obviously straight away. Um, so... Yeah, it kind of makes sense that she would she would do this. And uh, I've also, as I said, seen it here um, in UK. Let, let me be clear because and sometimes it's not really um, comes across as my videos, other videos, but not all Ukrainian girls are actually gold diggers. I would say actually most Ukrainian women are not gold diggers for sure. But what tends to happen is if you come here to Ukraine as a foreign guy, then the gold diggers and the scammers, which are kind of the level above gold digger, they know where to find you and they will target you. And what happens to most foreign guys that come here who don't know, have much experience, know, really have a plan for what they're doing, is that the most of the Ukrainian women they meet, unfortunately, are either the gold digger or scammer type, which is gold digger plus. And the vast majority of Ukrainian girls are not like that, but they're also not targeting foreigners, making it easy for foreigners to find them. And actually, most Ukrainian women... Uh, when surveyed, don't actually even want to date a foreigner. So don't get the wrong impression that uh, because obviously Russian Ukrainian women online get this reputation for being gold diggers, that it's actually the majority of the women here. But if you come without a plan, without knowing what you're doing, you're probably only going to meet scammers and gold diggers, unfortunately. So let's jump into the uh, rest of it. Now that she's figured out whether you're a good victim for her uh, gold digging. But if he turns around and says, yeah, that's crazy, yo. I hate being adult. Damn, like, I'm sorry to hear that. Like, you got bills? Like, mm. Like, pretty much, you know, that's a cold word. That's a cold word um, for, like, I don't got money like that. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not, I don't, I don't got money like that. It's just like, I'm, I'm not gonna pay your rent for you. I'm not gonna do that. Like, again, it, it's something like that, I, I think is, is just, you know, to, to each their own. Ah, oh, man. So that, Straight out the gate shows you what kind of man you're dealing with. 
What do you mean, what kind of man you're you dealing with a man who's who's not gonna who's not gonna pay your rent? It's not that necessarily he doesn't have the money to spend on it. It's just he's not he's not gonna pay your. Why? Why would he do that? So this is actually something that I've also seen a little bit of in Ukraine or in well, can say in Russia as well. Some girls are not very sophisticated. Um, it doesn't just apply to Ukraine, but they're very very basic. So they will go to the flashiest club and they will look for the guy who's obviously throwing the most amount of money on a table and think this is the rich guy. Now of course um, there are a lot of rich guys and actually some of them are my clients. They will actually take a table maybe at the club at the same club these girls are searching but they won't want to attract the gold diggers because that's a bit too easy if you have a lot of money. So they won't be making it very obvious to the girls that they have an enormous amount of cash and uh, this came up because I was speaking uh, to a girl and she was talking about a girlfriend that told her at dinner and um, she had been talking about a club in Kiev that I've been with with one of my clients and um, yeah she said well uh, the club yeah my Connery didn't really like the club so much um, and then her response was well yeah it's only the guys who have a lot of money who like it. Believe me the issue wasn't the amount of money it was the vibe and the type of chicks were there because it was the ultimate gold digger attraction. It was like a honey pop for gold diggers. So it just wasn't really my vibe. Um, not, nothing wrong with the prices and stuff at it. And definitely my client, who is extremely wealthy, uh, young guy, good looking. Um, he, compared to the other guys there, he had a lot more money. But these kind of uh, very basic girls, they don't get that. So there is a specific kind of signaling in the animal kingdom where you basically throw lots of money uh, kind of pointlessly away, resources away in order to show potential mates that you can afford to just squander lots of money. It's called Sahavian, Sahavian uh, signaling. So it is a bit of a theory in human evolution it can actually be a strategy. So say you, um, I don't know, um, let's, let's take an example like you go to the club and I've heard this actually in Sweden that they throw away uh, the first bottle of champagne they just pour it on the ground just to show how much money they are. But that is uh, a theory that, that actually can be used with signaling from finding bunch of Hey, I have just so much money I can squander the first uh, bottle of champagne of 500,000 euros or dollars because I just have so much cash I don't care. So I guess that is uh, something that in those clubs those girls are looking for the fact that you would just squander money rather than actually investing it. Uh, in today's world uh, it's a bit more sophisticated. You probably if you're a girl you probably want the guy who's actually good at investing the money and not squandering it because obviously you'll have more in the future if you actually manage to nab him and settle down with him have a family. But okay it doesn't work for everybody. Let's, let's go back into the video and see where we're at. If this is what she's really after she just wants a guy to pay for her I'm sure for her that's a good way to weed people out. Like 99.999% of the demographic out there probably going to fall to the side. But at this point it's probably a numbers game. It's probably she dates enough guys at the beginning of the month she's got to make her phone calls like she's got that cold call list. Now I think in Russian and Ukrainian culture here in Eastern Europe there are a lot of guys particularly if they're rich and married who will look for a younger mistress and have no problem with sponsoring her lifestyle because they just see hey I'm a rich guy or you got my wife and kids I'm bored or whatever it is they don't get on with the wife anymore or they just want an adventure and they will just pay because they actually I think in part may be paying so they can get rid of her easily <laughs> so she can leave listen I pay for my apartment I've heard this an awful lot that they will pay for the girl's apartment and they won't actually live in that city but they will come say twice a month and she basically has to drop everything uh, when he shows up and spend all the time with him and then he will disappear again and basically they sponsor her in order to have that transaction. Hey it's a free world so that's what you're into. That's what you're into. Um, in general those kind of setups are basically informal prostitution of course. It's not a real relationship it's just simply transactional but personally I have no problem with prostitution if that's what you're if that's what you're into and it's voluntary of course and make sure it's legal <laughs> wherever you're doing it or you find another way around it like this kind of sponsorship setup. Number two is go on dates that are nearby shopping centers. Oh wow she's got this all figured out go to a place near a mall. So this shopping center uh, obviously leads into what I call the shopping scam. Yes you go and this actually happened to a friend of mine in Minsk in Belarus where he went on a coffee or a lunch date and um, they were very close to the mall and of course where did she want? She went in, she started picking out stuff, 
Then she just left it on the counter expecting him to pay. They had just met, they had actually met on Tinder and she had the audacity to do that. So obviously this is something that, uh, that you will see in Eastern Europe and actually in the deaths it's infamous that they bring all the guys, the, the marriage agency victims um, as they're known as there. And you know, first they bring them to the scammer restaurants where they get a kickback and then they Beside that, they go shopping because they're nice shops nearby. So even they can pressurize the guy into buying them some nice clothes or some jewelry. They have chutzpah, I'll give them that. I was going out with this guy and when he, he asked me one time where you want to go. And I said, yeah, I want to go to this, you know, seafood restaurant or whatever. And because I knew that it was across the street from like the mall. <laughs> <laughs> so there is an important lesson for you. In Eastern Europe, you are the one leading, you're the man. The girl is not choosing the restaurant. So if you were letting her choose the restaurant, res recipe for disaster in general. You do not want to be doing that, believe me. Even if she's not a scammer, you don't want to be doing that. So obviously if you let her choose the place and she's setting up and she is a scammer, not just a gold digger, um, because is this girl a scammer or a gold digger? Well, she's kind of a little bit on the edge actually. Uh, just, uh, yeah, interesting, I hadn't thought of that. Before that she's, where do these fall? These categories, the blind stems to blur a little bit, obviously. Um, so let's go on. And he said, what you want to do after? Just like I, just like I thought he would say. And I was like, oh, I, you know, the mall is up the block. We could walk around the mall. As we were walking around the mall, he was like, you want anything? Cha-ching! <laughs> I have to say, she has great energy, this girl. Cha-ching! Uh, that is exactly how a, an Odessa scammer would react to that question, would you like me to buy you anything? <sighs> Recipe for disaster is said if you let yourself be used like that because the scammer girls for sure they are going to jump all over you and devour you if you're going to be open to that. Of course I want something! I want this, I want this. Oh, that's so tacky though. That's so tacky. Like even, even if I ever go out to dinner with, with friends or whatever, and I know someone else is paying, I always make sure, like I feel bad about that. So usually what I'll do is I'll order like the least expensive thing on the menu, just because I, I feel bad if someone else is gonna be treating me. I, I don't wanna, I don't wanna abuse that. So definitely, um, Graham Stefan has good manners, <laughs> but unfortunately a lot of Ukrainian Russian girls Belarusians as well, they don't have those good manners. And if you're not in control and you just say, hey, order anything you want, they may well order everything they want on the menu and they actually won't even respect you uh, for letting them do that. So definitely that's something to be careful of. And yeah, in Russian Ukrainian uh, society, um, you shouldn't be ordering everything that's the most expensive. I mean, that's actually a sign of a low quality woman because she can't tell anything that's good or what she really wants. So she just looks at the price like most expensive, most expensive. And I've been on those dates um, and yeah, just they don't know. They just, and then you have to listen to these kind of girls say, talk about these brands or different, I don't know, bottles of champagne and they don't know anything about the taste. Let me tell you a funny story. My friend Remy uh, showed up at a club and I was with a girl and uh, he said like, Connor, you know, what do you want to drink? I said, whatever. I can't remember what I ordered. Probably it was a gin and tonic, we'll say. And he asked the girl what she wanted and she asked for the most expensive uh, French cognac. Something that was the most expensive thing basically on the menu as a single drink at that club. Uh, afterwards, he told me, uh, by the way, I didn't get her that cognac. I was, oh, what did you get her? He said, I got her the cheapest Ukrainian cognac. She did not know the difference between the two. So, because she was perfectly happy with her French cognac. So definitely that is a sign as well uh, that not very high quality, very knowledgeable if they're always just looking at the price tag. So be warned. She just took the opposite approach. She's like, well, you're paying? Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get lobster. I'm gonna get, what's, what's the most expensive bottle of champagne? Yeah, I'm gonna get that. Woo! Yes, he nailed it. That is exactly what a Ukrainian or Russian gold digger or scammer will do. They will order the lobsters and champagne. And this is something that I heard a lot from uh, when I was organizing my scam booster boot camp. I sent out a survey and guys were talking about this that suddenly, because they didn't speak Russian, um, this lobster and champagne would arrive on the table. She'd have a girlfriend there that also wasn't invited on the date and they would just milk it. Probably because they're also on a kickback from the restaurant. Uh, <clears throat> by the way, if you're interested in my Scam Booster Bootcamp, um, and basically if you have like, no experience with scammers like um, Graham Stefan here, then probably it's a good thing to check out. I'll put a link to it in the description to this video as well. So actually Graham, if you're thinking of 
I know he has a girlfriend because he shows her in one of his videos, but if you end up single and decide to come to Eastern Europe, probably good to write me a message or check out my Scam Booster Bootcamp before you come. Number three is make him feel good for spending money on you. If you make a guy feel good for spending money on you, sis, he's gonna spend more money on you. So example is like, let's say he bought, he took you shopping like, oh my God, thank you, baby. Like, I really appreciate it. Like, you're so different from the other dudes I date. Oh my God, you're so much better than every other guy who's ever bought me Louis Vuitton, ever. Sis, if it's his birthday, it's Christmas or Valentine's Day, you could spend $200 on like a, Gucci, a cologne for him. You know what I'm saying? Or his favorite sneakers. To show he's appreciated. Once he feels like he's appreciated, he's gonna want to shower you with gifts upon gifts upon gifts. Gotcha. So you gotta give back like 1% of what he gives you. If he gives you 20 grand, then his birthday present, 200 bucks. Don't be spoiling no man that ain't spoiling you. All right? Stop doing that. You know what? That's, that's a quick way for a guy to use you. Once a guy knows that he can get this out of you, he's gonna, you know, you give guys an inch, they take a mile. So make sure that he does it first, then you can slowly do it back. To I wonder what's gonna happen when the guy she's dating goes and watches her videos. Because it's inevitable that, that they're gonna find out she's making YouTube videos. She's got 824,000 subscribers. I don't know if she's if she's single right now or if she's actively dating. She's dating multiple, but uh, we, we don't know. But I, it's just, at some point, some guy is gonna come across this who's dating her. And I can't, I can't imagine any successful, self-sufficient guy who's, who's into her is gonna come across this video and, and not be repulsed by it. You, you would think. Stranger things have happened though. Exactly, Graham. There are a lot of guys out there who are financially successful, but when presented with a beautiful woman, batting your eyelids at them, they lose all sense of perspective and uh, control and they start spending lots of money. Number four is don't abuse his money or he will catch on and cut you off. Now, I'm sad to say, but I, I know this from experience. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least she's honest about it. But uh, actually, that if you're coming here on a short trip to Ukraine or Russia, they're probably trying to go to... If, if they're like this, they're like a scammer, basically, or... We'll call him a gold digger to be a little bit more generous in the term in this for this video. But yeah, they're not thinking very long term, the scammers. I think that's probably one of the most important differences between the two categories, gold digger and scammer. Gold diggers are probably not going to try and take as much as off you as quickly because they're looking, you know, like she says, she's even looking for a husband like this. So yeah, they're not trying to scam you in the short term, they're trying to scam you in the long term. And I uh, hear she said she got cut off. I think for most Russian Ukrainian girls like this, they couldn't care less because they will find a replacement victim probably pretty quickly. Number five, how to get a guy to spend money on you. Number five is pull out your wallet first and act as if you're going to pay. If he's a spending money on you type, he's gonna be like, what are you doing? No, babe, I got this. Oh, wow. The, the good old pull the wallet out first trick. Like, maybe you guys are at a store and you're shopping and you're too nervous to ask them. You're going to know once you hit the cashier, okay? Once you hit the register, bring all your clothes. But make sure that it's items that you can afford. So, with a Ukrainian Russian uh, scammer girl, basically, or we can call them the gold diggers for this video, um, they probably won't fill with their wallet or their card or take it out, they'll just probably look at you and say, yeah, you buy. <laughs> because, and if they kind of, and if you don't, they'll probably just put it back because they're not going to buy anything. Because the culture here is not that you normally get to return stuff unless they have an agreement, obviously, with the, the shop. Uh, and it's actually their swimsuit that they're always, you know, having to buy with their with their victims. So the swimsuit scam, you know what it is. Again, I'll link it below and up in a card. My previous content on that is basically when you show up on a date, the girl has suggested going to a spa and magically she's forgotten her swimsuit. So you need to buy her a $500 swimsuit, of course, because that's what Ukrainian princesses need. That was my five tips on how to get a guy to spend money on you. I hope you enjoyed this video. Woo, well, I definitely enjoyed the video. The bit I was actually able to see since she took it down off her own channel and I enjoy watching it on Graham Stefan's um, own YouTube channel, his reaction, because I think he has a reaction that is obviously naive. He clearly does not encounter very many women like this, which is great for him. But, you know, if you haven't, it's like anything, it's like,
It's like being scammed maybe by a taxi driver. If you've never lived in a country where taxi drivers are dishonest, I'm not sure where that might be actually, but you know, now we have apps, so it's very hard to get scammed, but especially back in the day, they just attract the most dishonest behavior because they know you don't know the real price, you maybe don't understand the money, and they will take advantage of you. But if you've traveled a little bit, you get exposed to them, maybe you get ripped off once or twice, you realize it, you learn from it, and then afterwards, you're able to spot that and react to it and not get scammed again. I think the big problem is for guys who come to Eastern Europe, whether it's Russia, Ukraine, or Belarus, is that they've never really been exposed to this kind of appalling behavior, um, especially in terms of the short-term scammers, as opposed to this girl's more of a long-term gold digger. And they just don't know what to do. And they get caught out, they get lured in. Uh, the girls are a lot more beautiful in Eastern Europe than they are in the US. And uh, probably they don't encounter this girl because there are fewer of them. And they don't know how to react and they end up, boom, being taken advantage of and they lose out not just the money but also they lose their time because they've normally come for a short trip here to Eastern Europe when if you waste 80% of your time with scammer girls that means you only have 20% of your time left the girls are really worth uh, talking to and getting to know and maybe starting a relationship with and of course all that emotional pain that you go through the humiliation of realizing that you've been scammed it hits everybody's ego it also hits my ego if it if, you know it happened to me a little bit when I first came to uh, Ukraine it was over 10 years ago now I'm pretty I'm obviously very bad hardened <laughs> from this and but I actually don't encounter these kind of scammers very often because I speak Russian, I think is probably the Russian, speaking the Russian language somewhat well uh, is definitely a great defense because they just know that you've been around a bit. Probably you're not a good potential victim for them. So that is my reaction to, the, to this video, how to get a guy to spend money on you. No, it's not from a girl who's actually Russian, but I just saw a lot of similarities there with what I've talked about here in the Volcast series and also in my other videos on my YouTube channel. And I'm actually gonna to react to some other videos. Another one that's similar, I do mention a YouTuber who runs a, a basically an online gold digging school. She has another good video that I'll react to next week. That's my plan. And I also went to look for similar kind of Russian YouTube content. Now there was nothing that I found that was as viral as this that caused such a reaction, but um, there are definitely like online schools also to teach Russian women to be gold diggers, which is kind of sad, but okay, it's a free world if that's the information that you want to sell, whether it's legal or not, you know, to encourage people to basically defraud. Um, you know, it's very borderline on that. But anyways, I'm going to react to some of those videos. I've been putting them, collating uh, some of the content together today. So that's all coming up. So as I mentioned, I go into a lot of this more in depth in my Scam Booster uh, scam Buster boot camp, not the Scam Booster. We're doing the opposite to Scam Boosting. We're actually doing Scam Busting. Uh, so it's an anti-scammer boot camp that I've just finished up uh, filming. So I'm going to drop a link to that below in description to this video. And if you want to know how to avoid the biggest mistakes made by Western men when they come to a city like Kiev in Ukraine, so anywhere like Russia, Ukraine, or Belarus, then you want to going to want to get my free checklist is the five biggest mistakes made by Western men when they come here to date uh, Eastern European women, whether they happen to be Russian, Ukrainian, or Belarusian. And I'm going to put that in the description below this video. Go and check it out. I'm only going to leave it up probably when this video is out for a few days. So if you haven't got it, just check, go down, click on the link, type in your email address, and then I will send it to you on my email. And I'm actually launching a new bootcamp, and it's going to be about how to date and meet and seduce the beautiful women in Eastern Europe. So definitely you want to check that out in due course. And if you are the kind of guy who's interested in developing himself, you know, arming himself with knowledge and strategies and my know-how of over 10 years of dating and traveling in countries like Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus. Also other parts of the former Soviet Union like Central Asia and Moldova and the Baltics, then you want to consider applying to live the Zara experience yourself. And how do you do that? You need to go and click on the link below in the description to this video. There's an application form there. Um, you fill out the application form and then I personally vet all the applications myself. I think it's a good fit for us potentially to work together. Then the next step is that we'll jump a short uh, strategy call 10 to 15 minutes to see if it's really going to work, pick out dates, go through everything so you understand exactly uh, how the 
the, the Zara experience works in person. Now, basically, I'm going to solve a lot of the biggest problems for you if you come here as a foreigner and you want to avoid girls like this girl, the Russian or Ukrainian or Belarusian equivalent. So you don't have to worry about the language barrier and Russian because obviously I speak Russian. You don't have to figure out where to go in, in the city that we're actually hanging out in because I got all that covered. You don't have to go and party alone. You're going to be me and my crew. We're going to go out and just have an unforgettable weekend in a city in Eastern Europe together. And of course, the scammer girls and these gold diggers, boom, we're going to absolutely avoid them. You're going to be there to make sure you don't get scammed, which is the biggest problem that foreign guys face when they come here, especially Westerners, because they just haven't been exposed uh, to this kind of be bad behavior uh, to, a certain, to the same extent in their home, in their home countries. So the, it's not for everybody. And if you're the kind of guy that's, you know, not interested in development stuff, not willing to be of high enough value in order to be deserving of beautiful women. So you think that you can just fly in uh, to Eastern Europe and you've had no success with women in your home country. You're 60, obese and balding. You think there are 20 year old supermodels waiting here for you on the tarmac in Kiev airport after this ball, then you are completely delusional and probably you're going to be lured in by the marketing from these disingenuous um, marriage agencies and matchmaking services, the ones that are bad, which is nearly all of them. And they're just going to steal your money, to be frank, because that does not exist. You have to be somewhat realistic. You need to develop yourself and that means arm yourself with knowledge and also your approach here. So if you don't have that and you're not willing to work on it like you can start from any point you're where you're at yourself but if you're not willing to work on that then the Zara experience is not for you right because yeah I can't encourage you to go to those dating agencies because they will just steal your money they will tell you what you want to hear which is you just arrive we have something like a social setup and then all these women will all want to marry you at it that's not the case unless you're willing to work yourself and actually be deserving don't be wrong you can definitely do a lot better than you do in your home country um, with almost with, with a good strategy here in Eastern Europe, like several points. I mean, guys always use this scale of one to 10. Say you're out of like a five, we'll say the average in your home country. You can probably get a seven if you compare it to back home uh, by coming here to Ukraine without, uh, with the, the right approach, with a solid approach. Of course, you can go a lot higher than that if you have a really optimal approach to that uh, because here what is a, a, a seven is going to be a five basically back home. But if you can push it even higher uh, with my help, uh, I mean, my uh, clients last year, two actually got married out of about a dozen who came and lived the experience with me in person. Uh, I don't guarantee you will even get a date, but this is what happens when you come with the right approach, with this optimal approach that I teach uh, the guys, my clients who come here in person. Likewise, if you're the kind of guy who doesn't have any confidence, probably a younger guy, like typically 18 to 25, and you can't even talk to a girl and you have no experience with them, I would recommend that you invest in like confidence coaching of some sort. Now, a lot of pickup artists used to do this. It doesn't have to be with a pickup artist and a lot of them are pretty dodgy, but uh, you wanna go and do that first because I think you really need to develop that and actually become confident with yourself uh, uh, as a first step. And then later on, of course, you, you know, we can, you know, you can apply to live this our experience. I have rambled on way too long at the end of this video. So don't be bad this video and see you in the very next one. And if you have also a reaction to this video, of course, Drop a comment below. Ciao. Sar experience.